Hello and welcome to the third episode of the Aloe Berry Show. Today we're going to talk about how you can know if you are a candidate for bariatric surgery. Today we have as a guest Dr. Hedy Berhirke who has been working in the bariatric field for six years. Dr. Heribert, thank you for being here with us. Don't worry about it. I, I'm a regular now. I like it. <laughs> Dr. Hilke, let's start with the first question. How can someone know if they are a candidate for bariatric surgery? That is an excellent question. So it is important to mention this. Like I said in previous videos, the bariatric field covers everything related to weight loss. So who is a candidate for bariatric interventions? Well, mostly everybody who has overweight. Who is a candidate for bariatric surgery? Well, that's a specific person. Do we have or do we know like specific uh, requirements to be a candidate for surgery? Well, yes, there are. The U.S. guidelines and international guidelines and guidelines in Mexico specify that a person with a 35 BMI plus two other problems related to overweight, like joint problems, diabetes, hard to control hypertension. There is a ton of them. As long as you have above a 35 and those, you might be a candidate. Is it necessary to have two weight related problems? Uh, when it comes to the 35 BMI, yes. But if you don't have any problems related to overweight and you want to have the surgery, your BMI has to be above a 40. Okay, so 35 plus two weight related problems or just BMI higher than 40, but what about patients that have BMI is higher than that. Yeah, that's really interesting that you asked that. Obviously, the normal BMI is below a 25. Above 25 begins overweight, above 30 begins obesity, and then we have different grades, 30 to 35, 35 to 40, and so on. If your BMI is above a 40, you qualify. But if it's like 60, 70, 80, all the way to 100, you still qualify for this surgery, but you do have to lose weight beforehand, just because that's gonna be the safest way for us to perform this surgical procedure. Okay, so you mentioned a lot about the BMI. Can you explain to us what the BMI is? Yes, of course. The BMI stands for Body Mass Index. It's basically calculated with your height and your weight. It will throw out a number which will qualify you in different areas normal weight, overweight, obesity, and all the different grades there are. We actually have a calculator on our websites where you can just put your height and your weight and it will throw you what your BMI is. So you can have a better idea as to what it currently is. So basically the main factor is that the patient has to be considered a base to be eligible for bariatric surgery. At the end of the day, that's the most important factor that a patient has to have but it has to be reviewed by a professional. This is not like cooking recipes. Every single case is different. So the best way is to get a professional opinion. Yeah, that is why when a patient is interested in, in weight loss surgery, we send them a questionnaire that they have to complete. It's their medical history that the surgeon will review. And according to everything that he reads on that questionnaire, he will consider if the patient is eligible for surgery and which surgery would be the best option for the patient. Are there any factors that could make you not eligible for surgery? Yes, there are quite a few. I think an important one for women watching is that if you're planning to get pregnant like in the next three to six months of your surgery, that doesn't make you a really good candidate. If you have more time than that, maybe like 12 months, 18 months, it's not a problem. It's actually better for your baby. If you are addicted to any type of substances, controlled substances, that doesn't make you a good candidate as well. And if you are not willing to commit to the pre-op diet plan and the post-op diet plan, that also makes you not a good candidate. Just as a reminder, these surgeries are not magic. It's actually a tool that the surgeon will provide so you can make some changes in your lifestyle and you can have better results for the longer term. Yeah, I agree with what you said. It's not magic, but it, it is magical. At least the first months, this is why the surgery is so important because it makes a person be better, at least with their habits. So at the end of the day, it all comes down to diet and exercise. 
And that's it for today's Aloe Berry Show. My name is Denise Campagna and we will see you again on the next episode.